Now, occasionally you might have the need to, uh, to make some renderings uh, of your products and make them into a studio, sort of put them in a studio environment. Actually, you might be doing this occasionally, you might be doing this all the time, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, so you might need to do it. There might be occasions. So, you know, you know you're doing to do things um, where the lighting is important and the background is important. And maybe the built-in HDRI backgrounds aren't really cutting it for you. So what do you have at your disposal to, um, to make it easier for yourself? And the answer, of course, is to, to model everything. And that's what I'm going to do today or show you. Today, like the assembly that we're looking at there is actually this thing uh, where I have the the bot uh, mannequin um, is geometry is the one is is the is the part or the product that I'm looking to do the rendering of, but I've rendered and sorry I've created geometry for everything else, including a fairly detailed light uh, umbrella and reflector model. So what I've done, um, and some of you may have seen a previous. Uh, video that I did which was where I was creating these parametric umbrellas and uh, now you know why. So this is, uh, this is where I put them to use but that's not it, it's not just the reflector, there's a source of light here, that little sphere in the back there is the is the um, the light source of the bowl basically and then there's here there's a bit of a diffuser and actually you can see you can see that there's a bulb, there's a um, a reflector and uh, and a front screen in here as well. So it's not shown at the moment, but there is. It's well, it's shown, but it's translucent, so it's hard to see. The thing that I've just clicked on there and selected is a, uh, a kind of translucent diffuser. Um, if any of you've seen these kinds of umbrellas and soft boxes in photo studios before, you'll, you'll kind of know what I mean. Anyway, it's a piece of cloth which is. You know, semi-translucent across the front there. I've modeled everything. Uh, they're surface models. Um, I've also modeled something that we'll bring in later. And I've also modeled the paper backdrop, you know, nine foot high or whatever it is. So that is the assembly. And if we take it over to a, sem uh, to a uh, render studio, I'll show you a bit of that. So let's open the scene now uh, that we created before. And for those of you keenly watching, it said there that it can take up to three minutes now it's unlikely to need to take three minutes to find uh, the resources online um, th that is very very conservative warning we put there but uh, we very very rarely need to, uh, to to wait any longer than I've just shown you there so I'm going to probably use a, a bunch of tips and tricks here so you know get out your notepads and, and follow along so I, I named views are, are key, right? So whether they're named views uh, that you've created over in the assembly, which you can do, they will carry across, including sections. Uh, if you have a section cut and may make a named view of that, then it will be available for you over here in Render Studio as well, uh, under sections and the named views. But I've just got this one start view here. Uh, that assures me that I'm going to be in the right uh, orientation and the right you know, camera angles and, and everything else um, every time. So at the moment, I have a background, uh, which is one of these uh, HDRI or HDR images. Uh, it's the Studio Small 3, uh, which you can find if you go to the environment library here and, you know, do a search. Always use a search uh, for this. There's just too many to, to scroll through otherwise. So Studio Small 3 is an HDR image which has got a light source and it's got kind of some backgrounds but they're really not very satisfying. Um, that's why I've modeled everything and you'll see the better effect from that. So we have the studio in there and there's an intensity of the, of the background, of the, uh, of the lighting which comes from that scene and we can control that, you know, we can tone it down a lot. And that's in fact what I want to do because I'm going to, sorry, I should have said accept that, shouldn't I? Uh, it's hard to talk and type at the same time, sometimes. All right, so we've brought the intensity. Now this is the intensity of the scene that is being implied by that HDR file. And I'm not really using it for much anymore. 
um, there's a slight shadow you can see in the back here and, and sort of bleeding it around, giving it a little bit of ambience. But what I want to do is use all my um, assemblies, which I've hidden at the moment, and I'm going to start bringing them in one by one. So I've just activated that umbrella. And again, you know, the umbrella consists of a bulb and this front screen, and um, that's really all that's on at this moment. And you can see the effect of it. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, and it's going to render that out. It takes a couple of seconds. And it's quite a complicated, a complex texture on the background there. Uh, that's why it takes a little bit extra. But the, you can see that the rendering, uh, the, the tracing and the photo, the ray tracing that's been done on here is, is really quite nice for the uh, for the mannequin. Now you can see the diffuser. This this kind of white cloth that sits in front of the umbrella, and it helps diffuse the light. Now the light is being focused and bounced around in this reflector. Um, and I'll, you can see the effect of that. If I just rotate it a little bit here and keep your eye, uh, well, keep your eye in both places because when I change the, I'm going to turn the ref, the front screen off. You'll see what effect it has um, on the scene, and it's quite obvious. You can see how the light is now much much harder. Uh, we've got a distinct shadow line here. Um, across the uh, where the geometry you can't see the the light coming from here anymore you can kind of get the the hint there that and I'll click on it and you can see here I've used a an appearance or a material on the inside here which is an aluminum foil shiny wrinkled um, which is kind of realistic because these things are aligned with a kind of a mylar uh, metallic foil um, which is crinkly <laughs> Right, so it throws, it bounces the light around quite well. And if I turn this front screen on again, you'll see how that diffuser really does work. Um, it diffuses things. And that front screen, um, I've just got it set, uh, you know, with some you know, base color and, and diffusion references and, um, you know, transmission values here. Uh, to make it, you know, it's probably more diffuse than in reality at the moment, but I just wanted to contrast the effect of having it on and off so that you can see exactly why I was doing this. Now, if I'll, I'll go back to the, the front view and I'll use my name view again to do that because that's the convenient way to do it. So I'll do that on off again. I change the front screen, turn the front screen off, and now you can see uh, see the nice shadow on the wall. That's pretty cool. Um, and these assemblies here, uh, I've got another one of them, and it's hidden, but I'll bring it online. Uh, bring it online now. Now this one is a little bright um, at the moment because I've taken, you know, I want to put the diffuser back, so otherwise it's too intense. And, and there you go. Here's a nice kind of balanced lighting setup, um, something that you'd kind of try and do in a studio where you have a, a highlight or a key light or a hair light, you know, up high. And, you know, it's, it's throwing the shadows on this side of the face. Uh, sorry, showing the highlights on this side of the face. This one is showing um, the highlights on the neck and then the side of the face there. And then there's a little bit of shadow in between. Um, there's various different setups, including something that's known as a Rembrandt, Rembrandt lighting, um, similar to this. Uh, but yeah, again, you have a look at the tells, uh, look at the shadows, where how the shadows are falling. Uh, we've got a little bit of wraparound light from the ambience in the studio. Someone left the kitchen lights on or something. Um, right, so <laughs> the, the, we, we, we're going well now. The next thing that we might want to do, and the last thing here, is this other surface that I've got. It's another part instance and you can't see it from this angle so I'm going to turn it around and what it is it's actually a big kind of full-length mirror. Um, let me click on it here you'll see that I've assigned a chrome uh, appearance to it and you can't really see too much yet until I come around the other side.
Yeah, here you can see the reflection coming into view now. So the reflection um, is being diffused. You know, this is not a perfect mirror. Uh, it's got roughness on the surface, so you can see that the, it's kind of a little bit, uh, a bit blurred out there. Um, but what it's doing is it's bouncing light back in at the at the subject. And again, this is exactly how you would set things up in a real photo studio. You bounce maybe their light. Um, you know, cards made of uh, some kind of foam core with a very bright white side to it, which bounces light back in very nicely. Uh, or mirrors, if you really want, you know, mirrors can, can really give harsh highlights. In fact, if we try that for sort of one final thing, you know, this is an experiment that, in fact, I have not tried. So you kind of, you're going to see it here first. I'm going to turn off that first uh, oh, that second umbrella that we I'll turn off the top one and now you can sort of see the uh, the effect of this reflector now I'll turn the reflector off just quickly yeah, it's a little subtle um, but it's there if I turn it back on you'll see mainly the shadows start to uh, you know just even out a little bit um, it might be a little bit more obvious if we take the again that diffuser screen off. Um, I don't know. Or what we can do is actually move the mirror. Um, so if we select an object either directly from the scene graph here, or just I selected it, you know, clicked on it here like this, and you go to the selection parameters. Uh, you'll see that there's a translation and rotation and scaling um, capability. So it's rotated at 65 degrees in Z at the moment. So let's go to 90. And that's going to bring it right on the side there. So let's, that's good. That's good. That's exactly right. right. And um, you should be able to start to see a, a little bit of an effect. Now, what we can do also is move this umbrella around or actually move the whole umbrella around and we're going to rotate it in Z again to C axis maybe 45 degrees well that's a little bit too much <laughs> um, maybe minus 15 degrees yeah you can see you can have a lot of fun with this because it's it's really just like moving stuff around. If you have a studio available to you, if you're lucky enough to, to be able to do this in, in a photo shoot setup, um, yeah, it's, it, it's really nice because you can replicate and trial and error, you know, all sorts of things. So we've, minus 0.5, let's put the mirror all the way back there. And we've kind of got the thing um, bouncing at itself across this side now. Anyway, I could play with this all day. Um, there are almost an infinite number of textures and backgrounds and things, but if you take it to one more level, you can create your own setups um, using you know, 3D modeling. You know, bring stuff in, um, create your studio, uh, and then put your subject in there. Uh, light it up like it's in real life. And, um, and and go from there. So Render Studio, it's not just a, a way to create compelling marketing images. You can actually use this as part of a design process as well, you know, ensuring that surfaces are, are behaving as you'd expect them. You know, the reflectivity, the transmission, uh, whether using diffuse materials or, or semi-translucent materials, you can do a lot um, of design work uh, in Render Studio as well.